What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only, what's my name? Keith Allen, you got it right. All right, here's the deal. I know a lot of us have like a total wrong perspective like on ourselves. A lot of us have low self-esteem. A lot of us just put ourselves down just way, way, way too much. Stop like being so hard on yourself, all right? There's greatness on the inside of you, really. I'm your number one fan. I believe in you guys, man. Go and get it because our number one enemy sometimes can be ourselves. I believe in you. So when Fortnite Battle Royale first released, you know, it took the world by storm, right? You know, going from strength to strength with each of its updates, but nothing can be great forever. And eventually even Fortnite's vaunted Battle Royale mode was set up for a gradual decline. You know, with new items and mechanics being added to the game like all the time and the season one map becoming more and more bloated with more locations, it was only like a matter of time before the straw that broke Fortnite's back was added to the game. So today, we're gonna be talking about, you know, like how Fortnite's worst update set the stage for its ultimate decline. But before we get into this video, if you guys wanna get better at Fortnite this season, then you gotta head on over to ProGuys.com immediately and find yourself a Fortnite Pro to teach you the ropes. Oh, I guess it's about that time. <laughs> it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. Let's get this going, sorry about that. All right, so let's be honest, you know, Fortnite Battle Royale has changed a lot since the early days of the game, right? Not only were all the players total bots in the first few weeks, but the game also played completely differently. Turbo building hadn't even been a thing yet, you know, so building felt slow and clunky at times. Shooting your weapons was still completely RNG. There was no first shot accuracy. The actual weapons that were in the game were still fairly limited with barely any variation, right? You know, things changed quickly for Fortnite Battle Royale and new weapons. You know, locations and mechanics were added thick and fast, man. And past 3.0, the ability to turbo build was finally added, shifting the focus of fights from tall towers to in-your-face, fast-paced building battles, right? So past 3.4 added first shot accuracy to a whole bunch of weapons, you know, removing that sense of RNG that came with long-range gunfights. Plus, new weapons were being added all the time, making the game just a lot more fun. It was only a matter of time before the constant cycle of changes and updates would start to weigh heavily on the shoulders of Fortnite. You know, it's clear to everybody that at this point that Fortnite isn't quite the game that it used to be, right? We all know that. End zone build battles can be obnoxious and drawn out because the circles no longer move. Mythic weapons are eliminating people in what feels like seconds now, and updates just don't seem as frequent as they used to. So when did all this begin? You know, it's really hard to just track down an exact moment that Fortnite's Battle Royale mode just started to go off the rails. But we think it can't be traced to one patch in particular. The patch where Epic really started to mess with really what made Fortnite what it was. Patch 7.0, man. The beginning of season seven, when Fortnite added the first vehicle with weapons, all right? Now, don't get us wrong here. We know that Fortnite had issues before the X-Force Stormwing was added to the game, but it was this patch that Epic really seemed to start edging toward, you know, trying to keep the more casual fans of the game happy. For those of you who started playing after season seven, or for those of you who just like wiped this whole mess from your memory entirely, the X-Force Stormwing was a fighter plane. So the vehicle had five total seats, allowing a pilot and four players on the wings. There was a booster, you know, for extra speed and an air bike for extra mobility and turning. While the passengers all sat on the wings, able to use their guns like any other vehicle in the game, this vehicle had a special twist, a mounted machine gun that the pilot could use while flying the plane, making it both like the first flying vehicle and the first vehicle to have a usable weapon. These X-4 storm wings could be found all over the map and five of them were available at Frosty Flights, and more can be found at the seven AIM outposts that were on the map at the time. Two or three were at each outpost. You know, suffice it to say that, you know, the X-Force changed the nature of Fortnite for an entire season. While in the air, you know, an X-Force Stormwing could move at approximately 4X the speed of someone sprinting, making this the fastest form of transportation in the game. You could literally like zip from one end of the map to the other in like no time at all. And if things were looking hairy, you could just jump out and just go into a skydiving state to just get to the ground safely. Not only was it fast, but it was also destructive. A good Stormwing pilot could easily take out people like running across the map and not even building could save you because the machine gun on the front of the plane could cut straight through your newly built structures like that. 
Competitive games suffered a lot after the addition of the overpowered planes, to the point that players began to start truces in the air to make it later in the game so that they could just get placement points. Planes were, guys, of course, nerfed throughout the season, but you know, they proved to be just the top of a very slippery slope for Epic over the course of 2019. If we thought that the planes were going to mess with Fortnite's fragile balance, then the very next patch was set to shake things up even more. Patch 7.01 introduced an item known as the Infinity Blade. If you don't count the pickaxe, then the Infinity Blade was like the very first melee, you know, only weapon added to Fortnite. With that in mind, you know, it might be hard to imagine it shaking up the meta too much, but really this sword was far too strong. Okay, so for a start, whoever picked up the sword first in the game, they were gonna be granted full health and shields, which were increased to 200 health and 200 shield. If the player took damage while wielding the sword, then they would be able to regenerate the damage taken at a rate of one HP per second. Players with the sword would also have 130% moving speed, but that's just the beginning because the Infinity Blade, guys, was like the ultimate anti-building weapon. While using the Infinity Blade, like every leap attack or swing you made would instantly destroy all player build structures in your path. Then, if you use the super jump attack, you would knock up your enemy and deal 25 damage to them. Oh my god. While also setting them up for an unavoidable swing that would do an extra 75 damage. All of this would be pretty bad on its own. No one wants to have to deal with a massive sword that only one person can use and tear down the whole structure with a single button click on a good day. But this new item was added on the worst possible day. This item was added on the same day as the Winter Royale qualifiers. So pro players were like disgusted by the late addition to the game, complaining that they had been grinding and practicing the game, learning new strategies and ways to build for weeks on end, and all of that effort was wiped away in a matter of seconds by the Infinity Blade destroying the meta. The weapon was added to the vault just days later, but the damage had already been done. So, you know, Epic didn't really rock the Fortnite boat again until update 7.4 when they changed the way the game worked again, but this time for the better. Pop-up cup settings were introduced to the default playlist as a bit of a test. This meant that the material cap would be lowered to 500, harvest rates would be increased by 40%, and the biggest change of them all, you would regain 50 health or shield when you eliminated another player. This was called Siphon. And it was a massively positive change for the Fortnite community. It added just, you know, some much needed aggression to the game, right? Finally wiping away the turtling mentality and just allowing people just to try and seek eliminations with more reward for doing so. It really looked like Epic Games were finally beginning to understand what their community wanted until they took it all away again in season eight. Okay, so it was just a month and a half later and Epic Games had decided that they were going to take away what made the 7.4 update so good and reverse some of the pop-up cup changes. You know, siphoning had been taken out, you know, the 500 material cap and been increased again. The harvest rate was slowed back down to its original levels and players no longer dropped 50 of each material on elimination. All of these changes, guys, you know, stayed in the arena competitive game mode, but normal playlists were left out. They claimed these changes were because fights in Fortnite had become too aggressive more than what they were hoping for. So, you know, from this point, Epic didn't really, you know, do too much to make their relationship with players better or worse until finally Fortnite Season X arrived and proved that they hadn't learned from any of their mistakes with the Stormwing. Booting Season X up for the first time was a mixed experience for many of us, man. Sure, you know, there was a lot of joy, you know, seeing Dusty Depot return, but then there was also the horror of seeing a Titan fall like mech drop down from the sky, equipped with super jumping, force fields, guns, and rocket barrages. The Brute is almost definitely the most overpowered weapon to ever stalk across the Fortnite landscape. Oh, double kill! Dude, that's so that's unfair. Cool. It's a two-man vehicle, and it's almost impossible for a single team to defend against. All thanks to its rocket, shotgun, movement, speed, and 10,000 health, you know, there was basically, like, no way to counter it, other than just, like, a bunch of teams getting together to take it down before fighting against each other. Throughout the course of Season X, the Brute was constantly changed, ranging from making its weapons less powerful to lowering the spawn rates of the OP mechas. Nothing really worked, though. The addition of the Brew Guys was like even more controversial than the Stormwing in Season 7. And before Epic even knew what was happening, hashtag remove the mech had begun to trend across the world on social media. Honestly, you know, man, like though we're convinced that Epic still doesn't know what they did wrong with the Brutes <laughs> because they didn't remove them until patch 10.4, right before the end of the season. Thanks a lot. The end of Season X served as a kind of like reboot for Fortnite. A new map, 
that took us all back to how it felt to play the game way back in the days of like the earlier seasons before everything became complicated by mech suits and structure destroying swords. It could have been a fantastic new beginning for Epic, but chapter two seems to be making similar mistakes to its predecessor. You know, it just feels like Epic is just trying their hardest to just cater to unskilled players. Like what is going on? In patches 10.4 and patch 11.0, Epic began to experiment with things like bots and skill-based, you know, matchmaking to try and give everybody that elusive feeling of a victory royale. They also stopped updating the game quite as often, leading the first season of chapter two to feel old and stale before it even had really got the chance to show off what it was really all about. You would think that after three years making the game, you know, Epic would have finally just started to understand what its player really wanted. But after ignoring calls, man, to get rid of skill-based matchmaking from the pros and casual community alike, it just really seems like they're going to keep making the same mistakes. And it all began with the Stormwing. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and you know what? We're gonna see you soon. We got so much coming out, man. We are so excited on this channel. Stay tuned for more.